All right, I moved the uh, position of the go contact in the track. You can see it's uh, right about there where the diesel went past. If you can see that piece of green cardboard. Over here is the go contact where the green is. So changing that position causes the trains to wait a little bit at the block. You can see the uh, steam engine is at the block. Excuse me, the diesel is stopped at the block. The steam engine passed over the go contact and the diesel starts up. Basically, you're, you're defining a spacing between trains. Uh, if a fast train is trying to overtake a slow train, the fast train will get trapped at the block and it'll have to wait. If I hold this diesel up so it can't get past this contact, say it was a slow engine, uh, this, this fast train, if this was a faster train, it's forced to wait until this gets to the, to the go contact, however long that takes. And if you need to, you can move this thing really close to the entrance of the block, so you're giving your slow engine almost a complete loops head start. Now we've got the, we're still running the same two trains, I moved the camera so we can look a little closer to the block. Uh, you can see when that diesel starts out, it'll start out at reduced voltage, and when it hits the main line right about now, it'll get full voltage and it'll speed up. Watching the steam engine, when it gets to the first block, it comes in a little bit slower. You can see it kind of creeps up until it stops. Now that has a decoder in it, and some of the decoders apparently maintain their momentum, and you can see how it kind of eases out. That's, a, that's the DCC decoder in the engine. Even though it's running on DC, this particular model seems to retain its momentum, so it kind of eases the train out. Uh, the DCC decoders all seem to have their own personalities. A lot of them run on DC, and, and some of them, as I mentioned, seem to retain their momentum characteristics. So when the tender hits that point, that engine will creep in under reduced voltage. The main line starts here, so when the tender reaches this point, you'll see the uh, engine will pick up speed to full voltage. And the same thing when the diesel hits this point, now under slowdown voltage, hits a stop block, when it goes green. When it goes green, it'll travel under reduced voltage out till it hits the main line and it'll go back to full voltage. So these, these rheostats are just a, a crude way of accomplishing speed control so the engine's not coming in and making an abrupt stop and an abrupt start. Now we switched engines, we got the same uh, DC scale diesel on, but the Pacific, if you, if you back your uh, video up, you notice the previous Pacific was a 283 body with the white wall tires. This is a 21805 Pacific, the one with the black wall tires. This is a, a fully stock AC Gilbert locomotive. It has the original AC uh, motor on. I believe this has the large motor, but it's, a, it's an unmodified AC Gilbert AC unit running with the E unit locked in forward, but uh, it becomes a lot harder to control the trains when you have a slow one and a fast one, particularly the original flyer, they're harder to control their speeds. Uh, the slowdown block doesn't work as well because you get them in and you can't get them started, but even though these trains are running quite a bit different speeds, you can see the diesels cruising along like a scale diesel on the uh, uh, the flyer engine going almost twice as fast. You can see it's, it's catching up on the diesel quite a bit, but uh, the diesel's got enough head start that it gets into the block and throws the block red before the flyer engine can, keep, can catch it. You see they give the diesel most of the loop to uh, get a head start on the flyer engine, you probably should even increase the, the lead distance a little bit because the flyer engine is running so much faster, it's almost catching the other train.
Okay, we've got them running again. We made two adjustments. Uh, moved the go contact further around the loop. The go contact is now out here. Uh, secondly, I took the magnet off of the American Flyer steam engine train, so it's no longer controlling the block. Uh, if you have two trains on the track where one train is consistently faster than the other, which is the case here, that American Flyer steam engine consistently runs almost twice as fast as that scale diesel. You can take the magnet off the fast train so the fast train won't set the block to red when it goes through. This allows the slow train to not have to stop at the block, but just to keep on going. You can see how the scale diesel's coming, uh, coming in and the block is still green because the flyer engine did not set it to red when it left the block. So the diesel's got a, a green block to proceed on through, and you can see it gets out of the way before the uh, flyer engine catches up with it now. Obviously, the system works a lot easier when you've got uh, trains with can motors where you can the, you know, the newer can motors where you can control the speed better if you got like trains running a, a similar speed you can actually put three and we've done four trains on the same track because if, if you can put four engines that run almost the same speed on the same track they'll still they'll stay spaced by themselves for a while uh, all you need to, the block to do is make some minor adjustment in the spacings which it will do This is essentially a juggling operation because there's nothing really uh, interlocked. You just play with the spacing of the track contact T2 uh, experiment, moving at different distances from the block and uh, try to get an optimum spacing between the trains and just see if they can stay separated. This is, this is a mismatch of some sort because this green engine here is a slower engine and that uh, yellow work engine is a faster engine. They're the two mismatched engines. That little gray engine that's pulling in the uh, the curve branch of the passing siding is fairly quick also. Okay, I've, I've moved the tr actually I've changed engines. Now we have two stock American Flyer engines running on the track, both with the, the stock AC motors with their E, e units locked in the forward position. You see that uh, Atlantic that out, out there is running uh, has replaced the scale diesel and I moved the track con uh, the go uh, read switch the go track contact back a little bit uh, I'll point out where it is over here is now the go contact and I had to turn the rheostat up uh, again a little bit the rheostats don't work as well on these original AC motors actually what I've done on my latest G-scale units, I, I put two rheostats in. One rheostat controls the slowdown entering the block. The second rheostat controls the voltage on the uh, startup part of the block when the engine starts up again. That would be particularly useful for running these stock flyer engines because what i found is you can use a rheostat to slow them down successfully, but then when the block turns green and they're trying to start up, they can't get started on a reduced voltage as well. So if you had two rheostats, you could reduce the voltage in the slowdown section, but keep the voltage high in the startup section when you're running a, a flyer engine that takes a lot of voltage to get itself started again. You can, you can see watching this, it handles two, uh, two flyer engines reasonably well.